Okay, so I just want to welcome all the adventurers to this award. And I'm very thankful to have this opportunity to be with you guys today. I'd like to thank God that I can be here and thank the, the mission that for welcoming me here today. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Grace Alaspecia and as Bogdan said, I'm from the Irish Mission and I'm currently a guide level pathfinder. I attend the Balnaco Church and I'm blessed enough to be surrounded by my awesome family and lots of great friends. I love to bake and I enjoy running, playing tennis, and of course, I enjoy cycling as well. So now that you know a bit about me, let's get started on our award. So as um, we mentioned before, today we're gonna to be working through the Cyclist Award. And hopefully by the end of this award, we'll be better cyclists and we'll know a bit more about the bikes we cycle as well. But before we begin, uh, they don't actually talk about this in the honor, but I thought it would be good that before we started uh, doing the requirements in our, our award, that we learned a little bit about the bikes that we ride every day and a little bit about their history. So let's learn a little bit about that. So to learn about where the bicycle came from, we need to go all the way back to Germany in 1817. Now, Karl von Dreis, who was a German Baron, created the Dreisine in 1817. The Dreisine, as you can see on the picture on the right here, was made of wood and you had to, it didn't have any pedals, so you had to push it along with your feet, kind of like the little bikes that babies ride. At least it was still an improvement from a travel by foot. But the Drazing didn't last very long, and it was kind of a fad, and the craze died out quite soon after that. Okay, the next bike on our journey of bicycles to the bikes we have today was the Bone Shaker. Now the bone shaker is kind of a funny name and I want to see, um, can you guys tell me what, why do you think the bike was called the bone shaker? If you have any ideas um, before reading, before I read what's on the, on the slide here, maybe you guys have an idea why you think it was called the bone shaker. You can just put it in the chat. We'll just have a few seconds to wait for Facebook to catch up, and I think Bob Dan's mm -hmm. got the, um, the uh, chat on Zoom covered. Yep. I think they're busy reading it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's about laughs> no, don't read it. it. <laughs> Try to think um, from your head if you can think of why it was called that. Because it was shaking your body so hard? When you were... That's a good answer. The bone shaker was, it was first developed in France in 1860 by Pierre Michaud, Pierre Lallemand, and the Olivier brothers. And the bike had pedals, but it was dubbed the bone shaker because it was made entirely of steel. And it had steel wheels with no rubber around the, the ends like our bikes have, which meant it was very bumpy to ride and very, very uncomfortable. So I can imagine it was quite a bone shaking experience as the name tells us. The next bike, uh, we actually travel all the way over to England, which I know that some of you are in England. Um, this bike was called the Penny Farthing. You may have heard of this before. And as you can see in the picture, this was a very interesting bike and quite strange from what we know today. And the Penny Farthing was created by James Starley in England. And he created a model with a much larger front wheel. And this, well, this was supposedly to increase stability. And also, since the wheel was bigger, you got farther with one rotation, which was, I mean, that was the reason why I had a bigger wheel. And this was very popular in the 1870s and the 1880s. Unfortunately though, since the bike was very high, it was dangerous to mount and to ride for most people. And if you fell down, it was a very, very long way to go. And it would have been a, quite a painful fall. And- uh, Grace, who actually owns a penny farthing, and she oh, wow. does ride it. She actually rides it. Um, she is incredibly tall, so I think that's one distinct advantage for her. Um, but she yeah. absolutely loves riding her penny farthing, and wherever she goes, she always um, she always causes a stir. I don't know if anybody was at Campari. Um, I think it was the TV Campari. Um, uh, uh, three years ago, two, three years ago, and uh, she had the bike there. So if anybody was there, they might have seen a pe penny farthing whizzing past them and Yvonne riding it. 
Yeah, I actually did see that's it's actually quite popular. People do still ride penny farthings, which is quite cool. Um, and the bike that was kind of closest to the bicycles we have today was called the safety bike. And the reason why it's called the safety bike obviously was because in comparison to its ancestors like um, the penny farthing and the bone shaker, it was a lot safer to ride. And in 1885, the Englishman John Starley, he was also from England, and he was James Starley's nephew. He created the safety bike and this bike was much more comfortable to ride, but also a whole lot safer. Uh, and this bike is a lot more similar to the bikes we have today, but it still has to go through a lot of changes before it reaches where we are today. And that brings us to our bicycles today. And we have bicycles all over the world and a variety of bikes to choose from, like racing bikes, mountain bikes, and BMX bikes. Bikes are a lot of fun and they continue to change, but they have had a very shaky history. So let's see, can you tell me which, which kind of bike do you have? And are there any other kind of bikes that you know of? Because there are a few different kinds of bikes and I know that there are some, they call them freak bikes or like strange bikes. And the one at the top here is called a swing bike. And um, the bike kind of swings and it's, it's very strange. It seems like a strange bike to ride. But what kind of bike do you have? And um, what's your favorite kind of bike? Maybe you can put that in the chat there. Okay, adventurers, I know that you've got, um, I'm sure most of you ride bikes. Um, so uh, just type in what type of bike you have. When I was younger, I had a BMX bike, I loved it. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think I had a BMX bike when I was younger and I might have had, I think I had a mountain bike at some point as well when I was, when I was a little younger too. My first bike was a mountain bike. Uh, and on the first day, I just tried my bike going down a bunch of stairs. And don't do that. No, don't do that. Because <laughs> yeah, I told you what happened. <laughs> when I get, when I've got down, my, my bike broke. Oh, no. My That's the first day you've had it. And since then, I never had another bike. <laughs> I think a mountain bike is probably my favorite kind of bike to ride. I've never, I've never ridden a racing bike before. They're, they're all very different. So come on, adventurers. Let's see what you've got. Let's see. Anyone yeah. have a bike here? I don't know if they do. <laughs> I'm sure some quiet. of them do. Maybe they're a little shy to answer. Uh, maybe. Anyway, we can continue now. So let's just check through our requirements. And these are just, this is just kind of an overview of what we have to do. So to get your patch to put on your, to your sash, you need to earn the road safety board. You need to demonstrate how to keep your bike clean, how to safely ride a bike, how to use hand signals while riding and how to take care of a bike. You need to participate in a bike activity. You need to do a five mile bike ride. You need to make a map of where you went. And with your family, you need to use your map to retrace your route. So we'll be going through all of these things in a few moments. And a lot of this is practical. So a lot of this you will have to do at home, but all of it will be very fun and you'll be able to enjoy it and be very creative in doing it. So this is the point where you can get out your worksheet um, and follow along with what we're doing. And if you don't have your worksheet yet, I know you can probably get it on the, on the website. Um, yeah. You can download yeah, it. Put into the chat, so you can just download and come back. Okay, thank you. So now let's let's go on. So number one, we need to earn the road safety award. Now, oh, we, we know that when riding our bikes anywhere, it's important that we know proper road safety. So to ride our bikes safely, we need to um, know how to know, know all about road safety. So this way we're gonna keep, stay safe ourselves and keep others safe too. But you can go back to YouTube and uh, watch the road safety award um maybe you can share a link for that after yep, the presentation I'm trying to find it now so i'll pop that in the chat thank you okay so number two there's a few things that we have to recognize and demonstrate so we need to demonstrate how to keep our bike clean how to safely ride our bike how to use hand signals while riding and how to take care of a bike so these things are all important um for cyclists which we all are um, and let's learn how to do each of these things. 
So keeping your bike clean is important because number one, it's not nice to ride a dirty bike. And number two, riding, keep letting our bike be dirty can um, sometimes let it be damaged and we don't want it to be damaged either. But to clean your bike is really, really simple. All you need is warm soapy water, a sponge, an old brush, a bucket, a cloth and a hose or a large bottle or container to put water in. And really all you're gonna do is put some warm soapy water into a bucket, grab your sponge, and you're just gonna generously scrub your frame, the, the frame of your bike with water and until you are happy with the result and then clean it off. That's a very simple way. Now, some people use products to clean their bike and you can get sets ah. for cleaning your bike. Oh, you can get sets to clean your bike with as well. You can get them at like the bike shop, but you really don't need it. You can just clean it with some water, a sponge and some soap, just the dish soap that your parents have at home. So your parents can take a picture or a video of you cleaning your bike, but maybe a picture so you can show to your leader the work that you did. Okay, so I'm gonna play a little video for you. This is gonna show us how to ride our bike safely. And remember to listen because I'll ask questions about what you learned from this after we watch the video. So let's watch this. Riding your bike is a lot of fun. Yeah! Wait, whoa! Whoa! I don't think it's all that fun. It can be. It can be a lot of fun. That's what I said. Me too. And you're right. But it's important to ride safely. And there are things you can do to help keep yourself safe. Like what? Well, you start by making sure you have the right bicycle. What's wrong with this one? It's too big for you. That's why you're having trouble riding it. When you sit on the bike like that, you should be able to touch the ground with both feet. If you can't... I almost can. Almost doesn't count. If you can't touch the ground, you need a smaller bike. Okay, that is better. What else? Well, what you wear is important. You mean we have to wear special bike clothes? No, but you want something bright. It makes it easier for the drivers to see you, and being seen is a big part of being safe. It's also why reflectors like these are important. And they look cool. But probably the most important thing you should wear is a helmet. Why? Because it protects your head if you crash. But I won't crash. I'm a good rider. Even a good rider might crash. What if a dog ran out in front of you all of a sudden? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Wear it this way. Not this way. Or this way. Or this way. This way. It should fit snug on your head and sit low on your forehead like this, so you can see the edge of the helmet when you look up and it should always be buckled. Okay, can I get on the bike now? If you remember to do one more thing. What? If there's something wrong with your bike, like maybe the tires don't have enough air or the brakes don't work very well, be sure to tell an adult and tell them before you ride it, okay? Okay. Good, now let's talk about the rules for safe riding. Oh man, are there a lot? No, just a few, but they're important. The first one is ride with an adult, like your parent, for example, or with an older brother or sister. I do that with my sister. She's in high school. She helps me decide where we should ride. And where's that? We like to ride in the park where there aren't many cars. We ride on roads where there's not much traffic. Good, those are both good ideas. And do you ride on the right side of the road or the left? On the right, in the same direction the cars are going. Yes, and here's an easy way to remember that. Ride right. Ride right, okay, what else? Road signs and traffic signals. You have to do what they say. So if you see a stop sign or a red signal. You have to stop. Yes, and a green signal. Means you can go. It does, but you still need to use your eyes and your ears. Look and listen to what's around you. Just because you see other people doesn't mean they see you, even if you have on a bright shirt. Sometimes people get distracted and forget to look for each other. And don't be weaving back and forth like that because then the drivers won't know what you're doing. And we might get hit? Yes. If you're riding on a trail or a sidewalk, you need to watch out for the people walking there and move out of their way. And if you need to pass someone, let them know before you do it. All right. 
Now, this might be the most important one of all. When you're crossing a street or a path or a driveway or an alley or any place a car could pull out, you should stop and look left, then right, then left again. Make sure there isn't a car coming before you go on. So any place a car could be coming? Any place. We stop and we look left, right, and left again. Yes, and if no cars are coming, then you can go. But what if there are lots of cars coming? If there's a lot of traffic or you're not comfortable riding across the street for any reason, you could both get off your bikes and walk them to the other side in a crosswalk. Sometimes my sister and I do that. Can we ride our bikes now? Almost. First, tell me one important thing you just learned. Always ride with an adult or an older brother or sister. Yes, and what else? Wear your helmet. Excellent, one more. When you come to an intersection or a driveway or anything like that, you should stop and look left, right, and left again to make sure no cars are coming. Yes, very good. Are we done? We're done. Have a good ride. Okay, so as we saw in the video, they explained some things that we had to do to stay safe on our bikes, like wearing our helmets and um, making sure our bikes are the right size and when we cross the street. And those are all really important things that we have to do. But is there anything else that you learned inside of there that you can maybe put in the chat if you want to write there something that you learned? Adventures, I'm sure there's something you picked up on in that video there. So let's get typing. Or if you could ask a parent, if they could type for you, it's up to you. I also just want to mention this, I believe, is an American video. So they ride on the right, on the right side of the road. But when we ride here in Ireland, and I believe in England as in the UK as well, um, we ride on the left side of the road in the same direction that the cars are going. So like you have to ride with the flow of the traffic because um, that way we're able to stay safe as well. So anyone have anything that they learned or? From Rene, uh, wear bright colors to make sure people see you. Very good. You can also wear a high visibility jacket. I actually have one here, um, which helps riders to see you, drivers to see you also when you're on the road, which is another thing that you can wear. That's very good. So to do this, you could go on a bike ride with your parent or an older sibling, and then they can observe you while you're riding um, and while you're following all the safety rules. And if you want, they could take pictures and include that in your worksheet as well. But you have to practice to ride your bike safely, even when you're just riding around your neighborhood, it's important that you wear your helmet even there, even if you're not on a busy road, because anything can happen, you can fall, and you have to stay safe. So the other thing that we need to do for this requirement is how to use hand signals while riding. So we need to demonstrate how to do this. You can demonstrate this with a parent um, and you can ask your mom and dad to help you and practice them. So here on the side of our screen here, it shows us um, the different hand signals. So if you can see them here, I might actually, um, Stop sharing so that you guys can so that you guys can see me. Um, one minute. So as you guys can Just see there, take a brace before you go to the next one. Uh, I've missed Eudora who said you can get off your bike if there are too many cars. Yeah, that's really good. That's that's also important because we want to we want to take care of ourselves while we ride. So as a part of the hand signals, if you guys can do this with me now, you guys can actually follow along. So take your right hand and when you want to turn, you can put your hand right out so the cars behind you can see what you're doing. So they'll know that you're going to be turning right, okay? And when you're turning left, you put out your left hand so the cars behind you can also see what you're doing. When you're slowing down, you can put your hand by your side. When, when you're going straight ahead, you can put your hand by your side like this to know what you're doing. And when you are slowing down or stopping, you just need to put your arm out and just put your arm up and down like that. Because using your hands to show the, rider, the drivers behind you what you're doing is important because otherwise they might not know where you're going and then there could end up being an accident. 
but if there's an, an emergency and you're not able to lift your hands or you have to stop really quickly, you can just use your voice and shout, especially if you're riding with other people. Okay, let me share my screen again. Okay. Once again, with these signs, you can demonstrate them for your mom or dad, even riding on a sidewalk or on the road or wherever. And then you can include those pictures inside of your worksheet or send them to your leader. Okay, and the last thing we need to do for this requirement is how to, to demonstrate how to take care of our bikes. Um, now, these are the things that I've written down here. To keep the bike clean, protect the bike from bad weather, make sure there's nothing wrong with the bike before you ride it and handle the bike with respect. So let's just go through these different things. Keep your bike clean. Because if you respect your bike and you wanna take care of your bike, you also wanna keep your bike clean. Wash it when it's dirty. It, it doesn't take long to wash it. And you can do it when you come back from a long ride and you wanna keep your bike clean and fresh. That's another way to take care of your bike. Protect the bike from bad weather. Bad weather is the worst thing for bikes and you don't want your bike to be destroyed by snow, rain, or wind or hail. And we all know that here in Ireland and the UK, um, we all know bad weather, like rain and all that kind of stuff just comes pretty much out of the blue. So we wanna take care of a bike and put it in a protected area. You can leave your bike in a shed, but if you don't have a shed, that's okay. You could just leave it under a bike cover. You can get bike covers at your local bike shop or on Amazon and just make sure to get one that fits. And you can just put it on when you finish with your bike so that it's protected from rain or any other bad weather that might occur. Make sure there's nothing wrong with your bike before you ride. This is very important. Before you cycle, ask an adult, like it showed in our video, to check if your tires are pumped up and if the brakes are working. You shouldn't ride if they aren't because if you ride when your bike is broken or when something's wrong with it, you'll just end up damaging your bike more. So just set it aside and wait until you're able to take it to a shop to get fixed or one of your parents can help you fix it. You can also take your bike for a service every year to make sure it's running smoothly. I know that uh, we have Halfords here in Ireland where you're able to take your bike and they do a service for you and make sure that everything's running nice and smooth. And also you can try to prevent your bike from being broken. You can prevent punctures, for example, by trying not to ride on thorny areas or places with sharp rocks or broken glass. And you can try to also avo avoid riding over curbs because we wanna keep our bikes nice and we wanna be able to have them for a long time. And we can do that by respecting them and taking good care of them. Handle your bike with respect. Whether you got your bike for Christmas or for your birthday, you need to respect it. And you can do that by putting your bike down gently. You mustn't leave your bike out where it could get hit or stolen. Because if your bike gets stolen, then it's gonna be very sad and you might not be able to get it back. Don't throw your bike down because that damages your bike and you wanna take care of it. And of course, it's very good to use it in the proper way, following the rules to have fun. Also, I was thinking it's important that um, we remember that God has given us everything that we have and we need, we need to give thanks to God. And there's a verse in 1 Chronicles 16, 34 that says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. So he's given us all the things that we have and it's only right that we respect and take care of the things that he's given us. This way we can show our love to God even by taking care of our bicycles. Okay. So requirement number three asks us to participate in a bike activity. This is kind of where all the fun begins. You can do this with your family and with your friends and you can choose which activity you do, but I'll give you a few ideas here. You could do a bike race or a relay and set up um, like a start and a finish point. Um, and you could also like have a prize at the end for your friends and your family. You could do it with your siblings, your mom and dad. Um, you could also do a bike obstacle course. You could use cones or ramps or boxes, all sorts of things you could use and make a really fun, cool obstacle course. You could even choose to do a bike hike where you go on a long hike and pack snacks and see how long you can ride for. Um, and that could also be really fun. But if you guys have any ideas for bike activities, maybe you can think of something and you can put it in the chat then. Now, so I'll see if you guys can have any ideas about another bike activity that you could do. So if you have any ideas for a bike activity, just put it in the chat and then we'll see what those are. And once again, you can also just take pictures while you're doing these activities 
while you're doing your different um, requirements because it's important to have them and it's great to have memories of the different things that you've done. So uh, my um, boys are uh, doing a my boys are doing a um, bike safety awareness course at school this week. Um, I know so cool. several schools do offer that type of thing. So I, I think the adventurers could easily um, they could get a photo of themselves or their certificates that they earn afterwards and they can include that because I'm sure they'll have plenty of activities that they do with their bikes. Yeah, and I think that that's sounds great. That's a great idea. Any activity that you do with a bike, even when you do at home or when at school or whatever that might be, take a picture of it and that can count for this requirement. Okay, let's keep going. Do a five miles, that's eight kilometers, an eight kilometer bike ride. This can be lots of fun. You can pack a picnic and you can head out with your family to a forest or park to bike your eight kilometers. For us, we actually have a forest not near called Phil and Thomas Forest. It's lovely and it's a great place to cycle in. And you can easily cycle eight kilometers at a forest or a park or even just around your neighborhood area. And you can you can really make a day out of it, you know, pack a picnic, cycle, stop to eat and enjoy the scenes around you. And then at the end of it, you can take a minute and think of how far you've come. So um, you probably will need to plan this with your mom and dad and they can help you to plan this, but you can do this on a Sunday afternoon or whenever you have time and it can be a lot of fun for you, for you guys to do. Okay, so this is also part of your homework, which you can do. And if you, there might be places near you, maybe forests or parks that you could choose to go do that in as well. Okay, I so. Have, uh, before you go forward, uh, I mm -hmm. have a message from Eudora and as an activity she says have a ride around your neighborhood that's a very good idea that would be a lot of fun as well you could do that that's very good thank you Eudora, for putting that in so our fifth requirement which is our second last requirement is to make a map of where you went now this i think personally is the best step of the whole honor so i actually drew a little map of my neighborhood which is here but i'll show that to you after um, and when you get home, because I love arts and crafts, so this is something that you could do. You could take them, you can even make a poster, a big poster, or just do it on an A4 piece of paper or card. With your parent or your siblings or whatever, you can draw a map of where you went. And then you can decorate it, you can paint it, you could draw what you saw along the way, like trees or animals or people you know, maybe you saw cool cars along the way or a shop that you really liked. But you can make your map as creative as you like, and you can really have fun with it. And um, then you can include that with your worksheet when you hand it in to your leader um, when you're finished, you're on. And the final requirement you have to do, this is the map I did on the side now. Excuse my art, I'm not a very good artist. I can't draw very well. But this was the attempt to make a map of somewhere where I live. It's not very accurate, but it's a map. With your family, you can use your map to retrace the route that you rode on your map. So on the map you made, with the help of your family, see if you can retrace where you cycled. And you can draw like a little line with a marker or a pencil or whatever. And you'll be very surprised at how far you went because sometimes you won't even realize you'll be having so much fun that you won't even realize you're cycling so far. And you'll be surprised at how far you went. So that's pretty much the end of the honor. But there's a few bits of homework that we did discuss, but I'll just mention them here so you know what you have to do. Make sure to demonstrate how to keep your butt clean, how to ride safely, how to use hand signals, and how to take care of the bike. And these things you can just take pictures of and you can include them with your worksheet um, when you hand it into your leader. Make sure that you earn the road safety award. You can go back and do this. Um, Obviously, the link has been put into the chat, so you can check for that there and go do that another day. Also, will be a lot of fun to do. Um, complete the five mile ride activity, choose a day, you know, with good weather and include some pictures or um, an experience from that. Maybe you can do a scavenger hunt or something along with that if you go to the forest or whatever. Uh, you can really um, have a lot of fun with that. And your mom and dad can take pictures of your progress while you're working and you can include them with your worksheet then. I know a lot of places, Grace, do the, the local areas, they um, they have like bike trails and bike um, cycle ride um, ideas. Yes. So you can just research those and I'm sure they'll have them and they'll be able to tell you how long they are as well. 
Um, yeah, so that's I, I know yeah. the park near me has like a, a, a trail around it. So um, and there's sort of they've got things to discover along the way. Um, so I'm sure if people wanted to just Google, um, they've got probably somewhere quite safe locally where they can go cycling. Um, yeah, that's, that's and, uh, so true. Just if you somewhere can... new. Yeah, so I'm sure there's an area somewhere near you you can go and check and do a bit of research. There's lots of fun places where you can go and cycle. So basically, once you finish all these requirements, you have completed your honor and you can fill in the certificate with your name under the picture and the date on the side. You fill the certificate and put it on your wall or hand it into your leader along with your worksheet. You can include pictures um, along through which you could maybe even make a collage of the different things that you did. Um, you can really have a lot of fun and present your honor in any way that you like. And also, I just want to mention that on the first page of your honor, there's a big blank section, just a blank section of paper. And when I was younger, I loved designing my own things. So I thought it would be fun if you guys could design a bicycle of your own. Now, the bike could be futuristic. It could be kind of vintage. It could be just something from your imagination. And you could even draw a picture of you cycling your bike that you've created. And that can be the front cover for your bicycle award and um, hopefully you enjoyed that and now that you're all finished I hope that you have time to go there and cycle and that's the most important thing have fun and stick to the rules and stay safe while you're cycling.